type my... Okay, let's talk about uh, TDD, Test Driven Development. It's another yeah. uh, practice that you're, you're uh, pushing to. First of all, uh, what kind of languages do you use today, on a day-to-day basis? Uh, the d the l language I use most often is Java. Uh, and the reason for that is, is that I maintain the fitness uh, project, and that's written in Java. Uh, the language I use next most often is Ruby. Uh, because I like Ruby and I think it's a good language and I want to get good at it. Uh, the language I use next most often is Clojure. Uh, and the reason for that is is that I am fascinated by this language that has its roots in the 1950s and yet looks like it could be a solution to the multi-core problem that, that is burgeoning in front of us. Um, so those are the three languages I use. I, I, and occasionally I dab, dabble with C++, but nowadays, hardly at all. Yeah, <coughs> we, we won't tell anyone. Um, have you had, uh, have you found a language that where TDD is hard or doesn't work? Well, it's interesting because in Java it's, it's trivial, and in Ruby it's trivial, and we've got wonderful packages for it. We've got JUnit in Java, we've got uh, RSpec in Ruby, and then Clojure comes along, and Clojure's a, a very different kind of language. Um, and how, do, how you do test-driven development in Clojure is not at all clear. Uh, you, can, you can do it the same way you do it in Java. The problem with it is, is that it, it, the test-driven development techniques in Java and Ruby are, are bottom-up techniques. You, you um, describe your functions in a test and then you test them. You can put mocks in there to, to mock out the lower level things. In Clojure, you don't have this mocking ability or no one's, no one's quite figured out how to do the mocking ability easily. And so it's very difficult to think of a way to test in this interesting stepwise way that you would in Java or Ruby. Instead, it's almost like you've got to figure out all of the functions first, and then you can test the entire assemblage of functions, and that's very dissatisfying. Mm -hmm. Brian Merrick, very recently, has begun to fiddle around with some macros in Clojure that allow you to do this um, to do this test driven development again in a stepwise way. And what he's done is he's found a way to, not to create mocks, but, but to create the, the equivalent of mocks in Clojure. And I'm, I'm very excited about this idea, so I'm hoping to spend a day or two with Brian um, uh, going through his technique with him. How many people do you use Clojure today? I'm sorry? How many people use Clojure today? Oh, I don't think it's an awful lot at this point. Um, it's more of a curiosity than anything else. Although there is one company, um, Relevance is the name of the company. This is Stu Holloway's uh, group, and uh, <clears throat> they're using Clojure quite a bit. And they're using it for, for real client work. So I think that's kind of interesting. So wh when you teach people TDD, what do you think that does is the main obstacle for them to, to learn it? Oh, the main obstacle to learn test-driven development is, is all of the, uh, the uh, preconceived notions. At first you think of TDD, if you, if you look at te test-driven development for the first time, uh, you've got to think it's a stupid idea. Because what, you're going to write these dumb little tests and you, and you have to write them first? Who would do that? I, and the, my code is already working, so why do I need to test it? Wow, I mean, yeah, the, you, first of all, you get your code working, and then, and then you write the tests, and, and of course, since the code's working, why bother writing the tests? <clears throat> so the idea of test-driven development sounds stupid. Uh, and this is a, a large barrier to overcome. Another barrier to overcome is the fact that a lot of people have been writing code for 10, 15, 20 years, uh, people have a lot of experience, and then along comes this idea that changes how they write code on a minute-by-minute -minute basis, and that's really difficult to accept. You know, I, I'm going to change everything about the way I've I write code. I've been writing code for 10, 15 years, and now I've got to change everything about it. It's a very 
difficult thing to overcome, and it takes a fair bit of courage to face that maybe there's a technique that's completely different than you're used to that is better. Um, the next thing that makes it hard is the perception that it's going to take more time. And it's, a, it's easy to understand why we have the perception we're going to be writing more code. And these tests are extra code that we have to write on top of the real code. And, and this extra code somehow feels phony. It, it feels uh, extra, n unnecessary, and it's going to take time. And so we think, oh, uh, that's going to slow us down, and that means that we'll miss our deadlines. And, and the reality, of course, is that test-driven development speeds you up. It speeds you up by a fairly large factor. Uh, you wind up going a lot faster because your debug time goes down so much and your, your surety increases so much, but it's difficult to believe that until you've had the success. Another factor, and this is the, most, this is the worst one, I think, is that it's very easy to start doing test-driven development and fail. Uh, you just do it for a day, you do it for two days, you do it for three days, and it just feels uncomfortable, it feels wrong, it does take more time, you can't figure out how to write the tests right because you don't know how to do mocks properly, uh, you really don't trust the discipline, and so a week or two later you say, well, this is just stupid, forget it. And it does, in fact, take a fair bit of dedication. You've got to learn how to do it. It takes, it takes some month of doing it over and over again to really get comfortable and really understand it. And, and a lot of people go, you know, a couple of days down the path and then abandon it. And that's a shame. So do you think that uh, the successful factor is uh, keep doing it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is something that, that you just do. You have to keep on doing it. It's a discipline. It's a discipline that you say to yourself, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it from now on. And once you, once you take that point of view, then you figure out the answers to all the problems. You figure out how to write the tests. You, you invest the time necessary because you have made the dedication to do it. And uh, you turn, turn the whole thing around, and it becomes a, a very, very powerful technique. It uh, saves a lot of time, and you wind up with all the benefits of test-driven development, which are, are um, significant. So the way this is really going down, the way it's really happening, <clears throat> is that there are companies who have made that commitment. And those companies are now outperforming the companies who have not made that commitment. And so you get the, these little consulting shops, for example, who've done it. The, I mentioned a few of them before, but there are a whole bunch of them out there that, that have um, made test-driven development one of their core approaches. And they are simply outperforming the, the companies that don't do that. Um, and as that continues, um, we will see the old technique fall away because it fails, and the new technique will, will eventually win out. Type